Welcome to the May TBR. Um, I have for this month the obligations and then a whole bunch of mood reading options because I, uh, I read a lot in April and it was very structured and I don't know what my reading momentum is going to be because <laughs> um, I, I read a lot and more than I think I've ever read in a month in April. Look out for that wrap up. There, there's a lot of books, <laughs> but that said, I do have things that I want to get to for book clubs and buddy reads and continuing series. And then there's just a lot of other stuff that I have physically here and other stuff I have on my Kindle. And there's going to be a lot of potential and I'm not reading everything on this list. I graduate in May and I'm going on a trip in May. So not trying to put pressure on myself. I'm still working on like the whole getting a job part of after school, which is, you know, mostly just a lot of stress to manage. <laughs> like, it's not like you can apply for a job all the time, but there's just a lot of anxiety that like, I can't always read when I'm anxious, if that makes sense. But let's get into it first with the obligations. So first one I'll talk about is for the patron buddy read, we will be reading Dawn by Octavia Butler. I put this on so many polls and it finally won. I'm excited. And also, I guess, Let's just talk about another book club I'm reading for. This is Erin's book club at her channel, um, Booked and Busy. We are reading Parable of the Sower. So lots of Octavia Butler this month. Um, and if I have time, I could maybe try and read the sequel and then be caught up with the slow read along that has been hosted by Njiri and Tati for two years, but I don't think that's going to happen. But for sure, Dawn and Parable of the Sower. And another book club read is Burnt Sugar. This is for my local book club. It's short. I know it's about a mother-daughter relationship and it's going to be heavy. And I think this is probably on my list, my main read for the Asian readathon, because I believe it takes place in India. I could be wrong. I will correct myself on the screen if I've picked the wrong country. But reading this for the local book club, I've heard amazing things. So I'm excited for this to be more of my like literary pick of the month. And then my patrons always get to vote for a book for me to read every month and this month I'm very excited. This was actually um, the Elantrian tier gets to like nominate books that people vote on and this was nominated and it it's by an author I really want to read and it's a new release and this is Nettle and Bone, is that right? Yes, by T. Kingfisher. And I've only read a short story by T. Kingfisher and I really loved it and I know Judith really liked this book and I'm just really excited. I do not know what it's about. I do not know if it's genre blendy. I do not know if it's just fantasy. I do not know if it's just horror because I know T. Kingfisher lots of lots of writing in different genres but i'm excited and i think this one just came out earlier this year maybe in april i don't know <laughs> i didn't notice it when i was doing my other recent release roundup so i think it's probably an april release i'm very very excited and now for some buddy reads stephanie and i are going to be reading lots of epic fantasy <laughs> We're going to continue our Wheel of Time journey with New Springs, which is short, so that'll be nice. And also, we're going to read Fool's Errand, which is the next Robin Hobb book that I have been putting off. And sometimes I just have to throw it really aggressively on my TBR. And then I remember like, oh yeah, Robin Hobb's awesome. Why haven't I just been reading a Robin Hobb book a month? I still don't know the answer to that question, but there it is. So that is a buddy read that's happening. And I don't think I have other buddy reads, but I do have another book club thing I want to bring up and then we'll get into the pile of possibilities. And that is the nonfiction book club run by Jess Owens and myself. We are reading two books about Ukrainian history. The first one I have right here is The Gates of Europe and then also Red Famine. So those are two that I'm going to be reading. I like having this because it has maps. And also I think this will probably have a chapter that's not included in the audiobook because it's the... Um, revised edition. So Red Famine, The Gates of Europe. And I think those are all the obligation. I'm like looking at my list. Yeah, everything else is just like my own vibes, my own feelings. So let's go through this stack of options that I have next to me. Uh, continuing on with series, I guess we'll, we'll start in order of like my current excitement. And uh, this should be no surprise. Discord of Gods. I have not been able to read this in April. Right now when I'm filming this, we only have a couple days left and I'm still in the house of always. And I just know I'm going to need to jump right into this. Because the way these books work is that the prologue of each one, they tell you like the stressor, like the end point, kind of like not with enough detail, just enough to make you super stressed. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this ASAP. <laughs> so excited to finish off Course of Dragons probably early May. 
Similarly, I reread Middle Game last month, and I read Over the Woodward Wall the month before that. I need to read Along the Salt Y Sea, which I don't think I'll get to in April, and then also Seasonal Fears. So excited. So excited for Seasonal Fears. Like, oh, I hope it's good. Like, I'm not expecting it to be as good as Middle Game is for me, but I'm really hoping. And then once I've read all four of those, I'll do like a video about the novels and the novellas that have been up out up to this point. So in my stack, I have a library book, 36 Streets, which is in my February recent release roundups. This has been out for a minute. I think it was February. And I'm really excited. I showed this earlier in a Friday Reads. It's very shiny. This is a cyberpunk book. So I wanted to try and have some sci-fi options because I do tend to keep my reading momentum up when I have sci-fi I can read as long with my fantasy. And so far, a lot of my obligations and the things I'm excited about are all fantasy, which is great. But this will hopefully help me like be excited because it's like a different type of story. I also have as a potential buddy read, Evie, I'm not promising anything, but I would like to. Evie sent me this stunning copy of this short story collection called Maria Maria. It just came out. And um, it's pretty short, and I, I, we need another short story collection to read, apparently, because that's our buddy reading life. And I think this will be the next one, if only because I'm, I'm legitimately obsessed with this cover. So yeah, and I think there are Latin American, like, magical realism short stories. There's Mexican American in here for sure. Like, the quote in the inside is, The first witch of the waters was born in destruction. The moon named her Maria. Now, to be honest, the only thing I can think of when I read this title is the Santana song. But I think there are worse things for me to have in my head. I, I love Santana music. Another book that I have on my shelf that's sci-fi, so it'll be good with a lot of this fantasy. And it's on my TBR, and I can figure out if I need to unhaul it, because I've gotten through most of my physical TBR that I wanted to check out before I moved. But this one I haven't read yet, and that's We Have Always Been Here. And it's a standalone sci-fi thriller thing. I don't know. When I picked it up, it reminded me of like the stressful vibes of Alien and aliens, and I don't know if that's legit, but it's what I'm going with. Other books that I've got that are sci-fi. Dark Stars, the last book in the Resonance trilogy. I've been meaning to read this for a long time. I have it. I have the Kindle and the audiobook, and I haven't. I think part of it is that I haven't been really in the mood for rebellion stories. Like, even when my stories have had them, it's not been what's made me pick them up. It's actually kind of been a detriment. I don't know. I think maybe I'm just too jaded right now. And this is definitely a rebellion story at the moment, which, like, I mean, I used to love that, so I don't know what my issue is. But this is the third book, and I would really like to get to it. Another book that has been just, like, languishing on my Kindle, and I haven't picked it up, that I just need to start. Who knows if it'll happen? I won't be mad at myself if it doesn't happen. But that's Bone Hunters by Steven Erickson. This is the sixth Malazan book. It's been a minute since I've read a Malazan book, and most of it has just been, like, my mental headspace has not been there. And like, I'm hoping, I'm just trying to make it happen, manifest the energy <laughs> to pick this dense book up just because it's been so long and I just want to keep going. Like, I don't have like an end date or a rush to finish this series, but I don't want to just only read two of them a year, if that makes sense. I'd like to read two to four a year. I think that would be more reasonable. All right. And another one I have for the Space Sirens book club that I want to get to, but I don't currently have a copy and that's Far From the Light of Heaven. Yes, and I think this is kind of a mystery space book that some people I know really like it. And I'm nervous because mystery, murder mystery as like the, the motivation of a story does not always work for me. But I've heard enough good stuff and this is an author I've really wanted to check out in the sci-fi space. So this has been on my radar for a long time and it's being read for a book club that I care about. So I would like to prioritize it if my mental health will allow me to because like, Honestly, after my obligations that I've listed at the beginning, I have no clue what I am capable of. <laughs> like, after Discord of Gods, everything in this video is, like, huge asterisk of, like, shrug emoji? Don't know. And also, in that vein, <laughs> I think, think I might have a really cute thematic vlog I might want to put together this month. But I don't want to, like, promise anything that might not happen. But if so, uh, two books that I think I'll have for that is The Black God's Drums. And I'm forgetting the name of the other one, but I will put the image here. And yes, these are two New Orleans SFF books because I'm going to New Orleans. And um, I just feel like it'd be fun if I have the energy and time to read those while I'm there. I don't know. I don't know if I'm put together enough to be one of those booktubers who can actually do a thematic vlog. <laughs> we will see. 
But I just figured I want to read both of those books too. Um, one of them, I, I mean, I was looking at the one that I have an arc for. So the, the this one is not out till June. And I, I keep forgetting the name. Like I had to message Tammy to ask for what the name of this book is. Because <laughs> I always forget. But apparently music is tied to magic, which I think makes sense being set in New Orleans. But also my music loving self is just very excited for that. I feel like that's a trope that I don't get to experience nearly often enough with how much I love music. Like for those who don't know, I have played piano, clarinet, saxophone. I sing, I dance, I love music. <laughs> So music should really be tied to magic more in my life. So I'm hoping that one will be really fun. And obviously P. Jelly Clark's amazing for the Black Gods drama. And I know people really like this one. So I'm excited because it's this one and Ring Shout that I haven't read by him yet. There might be another one, but I'm unsure. So that's this TBR. Like I said, we are really leaning in to mood reading after the obligations. Like I don't mind having obligation reads. It's not a big deal. But I just want to keep the reading momentum up. Actually, this makes me remember there was one more and I just hadn't said it. This is Caressed by Ice, the third Psy Changeling book, because I think I have liked having a romance option around in case I need that. Because um, mental health lately, I mean, I think it's fun to read romance whenever, but it truly is something that can help me get out of anxiety or depressive states because I can just truly escape into those stories. And so I'm liking that I'm actually having that genre be more represented in my reading. I think that's really fun. So that's the TPR. Those are all the things. What are your reading plans? You know, do you plan to read a lot, a little? Are you planning to just watch a bunch of TV shows? That's also okay. If you want to leave an emoji, I guess the last thing I mentioned was ice. So an ice cube. And like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.